Hi there, teacher friends, and welcome to another little digital tech tool lesson by none other than Krista Muse from Samson Job. So you may or may not have seen on the Teachers Be Teachers website that there is something called the easel by Teachers Be Teachers. Um, you may not have had time to look at this, but what easel is, is it is an upgrade from the TPT digital tool. I think that the original name TPT digital tool was confusing some of the buyers as well as some of the sellers. So they decided that to kind of revamp it and with that revamp, they have a lot of really cool features. So I'm going to walk you through how you can continue using PDF products that you have purchased already using the TPT easel tool. So they're giving you a preview right here. And if you need to look at this on your own, when you go to the Teachers Pay Teachers website, you will see at the top that they are really promoting this and you can click on here to learn more. So when you click on here, you definitely can try this free. They have some free lessons um, that you can use this with just to kind of test it out. But if you also have any of your purchases that are PDF documents, you should be able to also use this tool with them. And that's what I'm going to show you in a moment. I'm going to walk you through the different things that you can do. But just looking at this page, you can see that you can have shapes on here. You can have the students sort by shapes, include text boxes. You can include lines um, and have different colors. So this will really help you make a lot of the lessons that you have more interactive without having to purchase separate digital resources. Um, one note before I move on, you always should be checking in your My Purchases when you go to your account, you have a My Purchases. And when you click in there, you can always see if there are any updates to something that you have bought. I know that myself and many other sellers, we have been ferociously trying to update the lessons and resources that we have online to also include a digital component. So you may want to check that before you get fancy with this and spend a lot of time on something. Um, if there is no digital component, maybe there's something you just want to do to make it your own, this is going to be the tool for you that will help you save money. So um, what you would do is you would go to your My Purchases. I'm just going to use this. This is my Chemical and Physical Changes Informative Text. So for this document, this is just a PDF. So I'm going to click here. Now, for those of you that are actual buyers, you should be able to see something down here that will um, to ask you if you want to make this an easel activity. So I am going to click here to show you the different steps of what you would be doing for your activity. Okay, so what we come up on here is we have all of the different pages that are in the documents. Um, and then we also over here, you also have, if you're not sure what to do, let me see if I can just move this. I can. Um, you can also watch this and this will walk you through this. I don't know how long this will be here. Um, so if you are watching this video in a few months from now, you may not have this opportunity to do so. But for those of you that are watching this right away, you do have the ability to watch the minute demo. Getting started slide, going into your My Purchases to see what is compatible with Easel, and then creating your activity. But for now, I'm just going to click No Thanks, and I am going to dismiss this. Now, I have practiced using the TPT Digital Tool, so that's why you can see the different activities that I have here and the dates that I last edited it. So this list is very convenient for you as a teacher. Um, I would recommend titling your activities. Clearly, I did not here, but I would recommend doing that. It makes it a lot easier to find. But if you just recently worked on something, it will be on the top. So I'm going to click on this. Don't want to delete it. Um, okay, so now it's going to take you on a quick tour, and I will just show you this quick tour just so you can see what to do. So right here, what we have... Um, I'm going to kind of go along with the tour with you. But this, these would be the pages that are in the document for the students to complete. So up here we have the toolbar. 
Um, you can customize the activity using the different things that you have here. So what is very convenient is for any sort of a PDF document, normally we put lines in that where we want the students to write their answer. Obviously, if you are a remote teacher right now, or you're, you have students who are remote, are not going to be writing on the document. You could use things like Kami, but sometimes those are down and it could be difficult. So on those lines, you can insert an answer box that, that will make this fully digital, and then you will be able to assign this to your students. You can also add text. Sometimes this is good if you want to summarize something or if you want to put a couple notes next to a paragraph for your students to make something a little bit more understandable for them. You can have a pen. This, you can circle key words, you can underline information, you can write notes, stars, all things like that. You can highlight important information. This is a tool I like to use a lot. Um, and then you can also add shapes. And this is good if you have some sort of an activity where maybe the students were supposed to draw or they were supposed to do some sort of a sort, you can make that yourself to make this a little bit more interactive. And then we have the select if you want to um, highlight on something and then we also have delete where you can delete. Okay, so then this is going to go over what I was just telling you. Okay, so to edit the pages over here, um, you can reorder them, do whatever you want. And then you will be able to preview and then assign and review here. Okay, so is this doing something else or no? It's scaring me a little bit. Okay. I think I have something over here. Okay, so you we have this reading here and sometimes you may want to highlight. So how I typically make my reading passages is I have my, um, I have a paragraph uh, that will give the students some information and then I have a question. Now, sometimes I normally have this bolded, but sometimes it doesn't come out that way. And it looks like it did that on here. So I will be fixing that. Um, but if you want to highlight it so that the students know this is something that I need to answer, you have the highlighter tool here to do this. Up here, you will see once I clicked on that highlight tool, it allowed me to choose whether I want a thin highlighted line, medium or thick. And then you also have the ability to have a couple different colors. So if I were to do this for this one question, I would go through the document and make sure that I do this for all of the questions, just so that I am staying consistent and the students know where they're supposed to put their answers. Now, another thing that you can do, because normally, Prior to COVID, if I were giving this out to my students, I would not, um, I, I did, as you can see, I don't have lines on here. So what we can do is we can add our answer box and then this will allow, I just need to make sure it is, sorry, that's just me. It needs to be lined up, right? Um, so now the students will have, an area where they can type in their answers and you have the ability to also uh adjust the font size um right up here and oh geez louise hold on so once you click on this answer box anytime you're clicking on here if you just saw it, it was making more answer boxes so you may just want to keep that in mind and again because i put an answer box here i want to make sure i'm being, being consistent this is just something that i do myself as a teacher and i have an answer box over here for this question that way it also really stands out to the student okay this is where i need to be putting my answers down so you want to just go through all of the pages and you want to just make it your own so you're going to include these answer boxes anything that you feel that needs to be on there now this first page right here we were talking about physical changes so maybe i want to make that stand out to the student so i can also circle it which that's not a very good circle but you get the idea you can also do things like this with the text just so it's again, standing out to the student. And then when you come to a page like this, this is where I was saying we have these answer, answer lines here where the students would be writing their answers, but of course they're typing it. So you're just gonna make these 
answer boxes. And you can see it is very easy to do. It's not taking me that long of a time to add this all in. Um, and I'm just going to keep going through that. Now, you also have the ability, because for this packet, I have it, to, um, it's all one, one packet when I hand it out to my students. But maybe you have students who you just want to give them the physical changes part, and then later on, you'll give them the chemical changes part. So if you didn't want to give them chemical pages, what you would, the chemical changes pages, what you would do is you would just click on the pages that you don't want, and then you would be able to get rid of that. So you would come up here. So you can see these are the pages that we worked on. These are the pages that now we don't want. So I'm going to click on them, and then I'm going to click remove. So another cool feature, uh, if you feel that you have students that need a little bit more work, you can add a blank page. And on that blank page, hold on, I'm going to move that up because as you can see, you can change the pages around. Now you have the ability where you can ask the students questions. Um, you can reinforce the learning however you feel you need to. Um, another great thing about this is you can get rid of these pages. You don't have to worry about the students having any uh, of the, about the author, the terms of use pages, or anything like that. You can remove those. And I'm thinking these are answer keys. Sometimes I get questions from buyers saying that they don't know how to remove answer keys from the PDF file. I do have a blog post that is that I have written about that, and I will link that to this blog post. However, if you're using the easel tool, again, you're just going to come in here and you're going to delete all of the answer key pages so that the students don't see that. So you can break something up that was a, this looks like a, it was a nine page packet because I just deleted a couple of pages. You could break this up into multiple lessons. And another really cool thing is you can import another file. So if you have a file on your own computer that um, that you have the rights to, you can add that to this. So you can really make a more robust lesson with this, or you can pare it down depending on the needs of your students. So that's really good if you're able to vary the different activities that you do among your students to differentiate how the, they are learning. So what you would do here is you would then click Save Changes. And when you click Save Changes, now you're going to come here and you'll see the page count is six. So the page count went down and we are left with only the pages that we wanted. So you can continue adding um, on here. We They're going to look at this and they're going to add uh, they're, I'm sorry, they're going to answer whether or not it's a chemical or a physical change. So again, you can just quickly add in these answer boxes. And you can see how quickly this is. So this is something that you can do if you don't have much time in the morning, you forgot, oh my goodness, what was I just, what was I going to do with the kids today? Um, this is something that you really could do fairly quickly, especially depending how many pages you would want to do. So I'm just going to add all of those there. Okay. And again, you can play around with this. If you want to add shapes, if you, if, for this page, what you also could have done is we could have added a shape. So here, if it is a physical change, we have a P. Hold on, I need to add the text. Ah, uh, what is happening? Where is that going? Oh, I think there we go. The P is there now. And then you can add another shape. Maybe you want to have the circles. And that we can choose this and have C. There we go. And then you can have the students. Hold on, let me use the select tool. Ah, you have to remember, I keep forgetting. If you don't click on the select tool, it's just going to keep making that shape. So then the students can move this. You can make a bunch of these. I'm just going to move these down, come here, and then place them over here. And if you want to make it a little bit more interactive so that the students can move it around, you're just going to click that these are movable. 
And then when the students have this, they are able to just move it. And if you, I'm sorry, you wouldn't have this here. And they can just move it so that it is answering the question correctly. So there's a couple different ways that you can have the students answer the questions, which makes it a little bit more engaging for them because you're varying how they need to be answering the questions. When you're done and you think that you like how everything looks, then what you're gonna do is come here to preview. And when you come to preview, you'll see you have your answer boxes that the students can move around. Um, so you can really get a feel for how it works. Over here, you can go to the different um, pages that you worked on and you can just practice what it will look like when they type in their answers. And then if you think all of that is great, you went through it, it looks lovely, I'm ready to assign this to my students. So this is what will happen. Um, when you're going to assign this to your students, you're going to click Assign, and you have the ability to share this on Google Classroom. So if you are a Google Classroom user, you can just click this, and it's going to go right to Google Classroom. I myself am not a Google Classroom user. We use something different. So what I'm going to do here is I would type in my school name and then my school um, email address. And then this is going to verify. I don't want to put that in here because that is private. Um, but this is making sure that it's going to verify that you are an actual teacher, that it's not going to a student um, and being misused in any way. And then it's going to give you a link to be able to use that with your students in whatever learning platform you are working on. So I'm not going to do that because I can't put in my credentials right there. Um, you can also, so this code is what you can use in Google Classroom. You can also create a new code if you need to. If you are sharing this to more than one class in Google Classroom, that might be where, why you would want to include more than one code. And then for those of you that are trying this out now, you can give them a, an assessment. So if there are parts of Easel that you absolutely love, then let them know. If there's something else that you think that they should add, let them know too. Um, I find that Teachers Pay Teachers is, is really great. I love to get feedback to be able to make things even better and give people an even better experience. I know for um, our side, we were saying, you know, a lot of people are getting very confused when they're purchasing something that says a TPT digital product thinking it is something for Google Slides. So they changed the name and they made it a little bit more understandable for everybody. Um, but I really think that this is something, if you have those PDFs, which you probably have in your My Purchases that you have been using for years upon years, get into that My Purchases section and look at what you have that you can reuse. That way you don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel. You do have to put a little bit of prep work into it, but I really think it is pretty simple and it's just another way to use materials that you have in a new and inventive way. So I really hope that this video helps you. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I really hope you have a great day and that you can keep using what you have. Bye everybody.